All right. Hey guys, it's me again. You know who I am. Today, I'm here with my Hydroid build. My sort of support Hydroid build slash like anti-trolling. Uh, and the reason I'm not in Simulacrum right now is because there aren't enough enemies for me to spawn in the Simulacrum. So I'm just going to wait for a bunch of guys here to group up. I'm going to show you what Hydro is really capable of. All right, so there's a big group of enemies here. So I'm going to cast my one, break that shield of his, and just CC these guys and just take away a lot of their armor. And when their armor is getting like low like this, what I can now do is I can just execute them with like a melee weapon. Or like a whip or my primary weapon. Because their armor's getting a little high right now. As these guys are almost level 50. So about sortie level 1. So you're probably wondering how is this anti-troll? Well, Hydra can not only just damage these guys through the rift with his first abilities. What he can also do is say, you know, say there's a limbo in your squad, you know, and he, he's just not letting up these, like, guys in this end of defense. You can't damage them, right? So what you can also do is just pull them out of the rift. And not have to worry about, say, a banished limbo and just being a troll in your mission and not anything like that. Which is pretty cool. Now, the same thing also goes for Anaros' Devour. And you see, like, a guy just trying to eat somebody at the very end of the mission. You can't damage them and and all that nonsense. So you don't have to worry about that at all. All right, so let's say the enemies don't want to just group up in your, like, corroding barrage here. Say they don't want to... They're just kind of not grouped up. And they're not getting in Ranger. And they're not, just kind of walking out of it or something like that. So here's what you can also do. In case of that, what you can do is cast your four here. And then cast your corroding barrage on top of that. Uh, here's, here's a better example of that. And just have them stay in that. Now, some of these guys aren't affected because they're very, very split up here. But they are very, very CC'd. And I don't have to worry about them attacking me, so this is pretty good and just keep them in there and just have their armor being continually stripped up oh, there's some armor gone and these are very very high level corrupted heavy gunners too One, level 145 and i really don't have to worry about them really attacking me too much while they're cc'd like this so let's try to get them like tightly packed here so there's other way we can do it we just have them all drowned here just jump in the puddle here one more and then there we have them in a nice tight spot. And now they're all affected here. Everyone has their armor gone. So that's just something to uh, just, just show you just in case, say, the enemies aren't packing up and like getting affected by, say, the range of your corroding barrage. You can just force them to pack up with um, Hydro's third and fourth ability. You could probably do it with his second ability too, but. That's maybe that'll probably work best, say in a hallway. Is just just wipe them all out with this ability. But remember, this ability is also affected by duration, not range. So definitely want some duration in your build still. All right, so here's the build. Uh, now I have max efficiency here, just so I can spam my abilities and use it very very efficiently, as well as use like um, Hydra's third ability to just get around faster. I think. Uh, that's just the way I, I like to use my abilities. I like having uh, maximum efficiency here. Now, what you could do is you could say, if you think that you don't need max maximum efficiency, now what you could do is replace, say, Streamline with uh, Pilfering Swarm. That way, this support build also becomes, say, your looting build as well. And you'll be able to, like, loot stuff as well as heal and strip armor, and that would be a pretty good build. Or you could just replace, say, one of the Augments or maybe even one of the range mods if you uh, really care to do that. Now, the reason I have the decent amount of range here is this range mod affects the blast radius of Hydra's first ability, not the Kono AOE of the ability. And what it does is basically more range you have, the more consistent the ability is with its armor removal and its hits. So if you have max range, it's, it's gonna hit uh, very, very consistently. 
Uh, it's gonna like it's basically gonna hit like every single enemy that's in where you pointed at, and. Uh, the only reason I don't have, say, overextended on this build, and I have these, just these two range is simply because I don't want to give up power strength to lower Curative Undertow's, uh, effects. Because, uh, this is also negatively affected by power strength, and I don't want to have, because uh, this, uh, the 30% heal on it is going to be reduced to a 12%, uh, heal every 1.5 seconds, which is not very good, and it's going to be very slow. Which is gonna be okay for say like an AFK build if you just want to sit in a puddle and really do nothing, then this would this would be sort of fine. But not in like a support build where you kind of need to get like back in action and like CC the enemies and stuff like that. Since the heal on Curative Undertow is percentage based. Big benefit from Hydroid's Curative Undertow over, say, say Oberon's Renewal now, is that the more health the target has, the be the more benefit they're going to get from it. So, like, for instance, Cryopods, Hydroid can heal really, really, extremely fast. And that's pretty good. Now, it doesn't work on every single Cryopod, although it would be a really nice change if it did work on every single Cryopod, because that would be amazing. But... It doesn't work on the double-sided crowd pods like the ones you see in the void or in Uranus. It only really works on the crowd pods that are like laying on the ground. So like say the ones on what Pluto, I wanna say. And the ones on Hydron are probably the best examples of a crowd pod there. I haven't tried it on extractors either, but it probably will work there because like extractors they don't have a whole lot of health. But you can heal ex extractors and mobile defense targets with a lot of other different things, so you don't exactly need Hydroid for that, but he really, really excels in healing defense targets. I also have Duration here to counterbalance a lot of my... Uh, to counterbalance Fleeting Expertise uh, here, and I also have it to make my abilities last longer, because a lot of uh, Hydroid's abilities are affected by Duration. In fact, all of his abilities are affected by duration in some way shape or form even his third ability even though it really should just be affected by like range uh if you have no duration on your hydro ability the wave goes like nowhere it's kind of silly and of course i have vitality now i pair this up with curative undertow simply to fix his very very low survivability here he has very low armor he has about he's the same stats as like banshee prime though he has a slower sprint speed um and that's that's okay i guess but it's not going to be like a whole lot uh, against like high level enemies and uh, that's where he really struggles in surviving so that's why i have most of the reason i didn't decide to sacrifice my power strength to uh, get a lesser heal even though hydro becomes invincible when he heals up in with this augment i feel like like just being su supportive out, uh outweighs sort of the need for more range here now you could probably swap the aura out with like whatever you like here. I just have energy siphon just because the hydro really doesn't need it with this much efficiency. Probably swap it out for like corrosive projection or other things you'd like, but I just like to have energy siphon there to make it all good and dandy. And yeah. Anyway, uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Alright, so, uh, congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Now, I will reward you. So, Ash Prime was recently vaulted, and, uh, I have a set, a set of him to give away, but it, the, the set is gonna go to the first person that answers my question correctly. I'm gonna test your show knowledge, TV show knowledge, I guess. In this show, this show has recently ended, on its fifth season, I believe. Now, in this show, the main character's ultimate goal is to return to the past. And so this main character has been sent to the future, and now he needs to get back to the past to undo his, his arch enemy's uh, destruction that he's done in the future. Which, what show am I talking about? All right. So yeah, so first person to answer that question wins by the Ash Prime set I have here. Anyway guys, thanks you guys for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy. And I'll catch you guys in the next time. Peace.